So today we are talking about Transformers and not the Michael Bay explosions, cool 80s toys kind. Instead, we are talking about Live's Transformers. So if you maybe missed out, when Live 12 dropped, one of the biggest changes to the software is the overhaul of the MIDI editing capabilities that you can do in Live. And part of that overhaul included both adding transformers and generators for MIDI. The generators allow you to generate or create interesting MIDI patterns. The transformers allow you to take existing MIDI material and transform them. Now, my absolute favorite transformer is Time Warp, and that is exactly what I want to talk to you about today. So the easiest way to understand what Time Warp is actually achieving for your MIDI is to take a look at velocity. So I have just a single measure of 16th notes here. And if I hit play, it's all at the same velocity, so it's gonna be at the same volume and any additional modulation that is dependent upon velocity. But if I highlight my MIDI notes and I go down to where it says ramp here and I bring it down to one, bring it up to 127. Now our first note has the lowest velocity and we gradually increase in velocity until we reach this final 16th note, which has the highest velocity. This then modulates both the amplitude of the signal coming out of drift or its volume, and it also adjusts the modulation that's occurring in drift. So it allows us to scale the velocity. Now time warp allows us to do the same thing but with time. And so if I go over to Time Warp now and I grab my third breakpoint, I have one and three activated right now, and I bring it to the far side of the display and I crank up the speed, we can see that now the speed is scaling and creating a ramp similar to the velocity ramp. In fact, having the velocity up here, we can really quite see the curve that's happening. Let's listen to that. Now, if we look at some of these other controls, if I turn on quantize, now the start of every note falls on a subdivision of the measure. In this case, since the grid is set to 16th notes, it's falling onto 16th notes. If I were to set the grid to 32nd notes, I could then adjust based off of 30 second notes. You then also have a control to include or not include note end. And what that essentially means when include is on is that your note will stretch all the way to the beginning of the next note, regardless of how long or short it is. And then finally, range either has fit or not fit. So in the case of fit, when it is highlighted, the scaling will occur in the amount of time that you have selected. So in this case, since I am adjusting just a measure, it's going to scale to a measure. Versus if I turn fit off, it is going to scale as long as it needs. And in this case, it is scaling a whole three and a half measures. This scaling starts to make more sense too when you turn fit off. Since our note length for our very first note is set to times 0.1, it is 10 times longer than it was. And it was a 16th note to begin with. So if we look here, this note now for one occupies one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 16th notes. However, when fit is turned on, it scales it all relative to the amount of time that you have highlighted. And you can do some really interesting things with this then, especially if you start to introduce your second breakpoint. And so now you can create these really interesting scalings. And this is the kind of complex rhythmic variation that would require a lot more programming than it does now that we have time warp. Now with a control that can play really loose with time, like time warp, it can sometimes be difficult to think about how you can apply it in a musically interesting way. So I have an example set up here that is a foundation for a garage track that I am working on. <music> 
The basic idea that I'm working off of here is this push pull kind of effect where either at the end or the beginning of a measure, a ramp occurs to speed up the notes only to then slow them back down, which we can hear happening at the start of measure one, at the end of measure two and the start of measure three, and then at the end of measure four. And so it's almost like waves of time, speeding up and slowing down, pulling forward, drawing back. Now to help make it feel a bit anchored and not random, in between those ramps, I have the notes working in either very close fashion to the grid. If we look at measure two, they are pretty much at eighth notes for the most part until this ramp starts to pick up. But at the beginning of measure four and at the end of measure one, there is this pattern that is strictly on the grid. And so there is this mix of familiar quantized repeating rhythm and these ramps that make it interesting. Now to help double down on that, I'm doing two other things. One, as we can see from the nice little smiles that I've got here, I am ramping the velocity as well so that these ramps in time are the highest velocity points in this pattern, which then if we look at the synth patch that I have created here, which pause the video and recreate it yourself if you would like. But if we look at the synth patch that I have here, I've got velocity to volume set to 50. And I also then have the velocity modulating a couple of different parameters, mainly the detune for oscillator two and the shape for oscillator one. And that helps to draw emphasis to the ramp. If I were to disengage both of those and get rid of the velocity to volume ramp as well, this becomes a lot less musically interesting, less expressive. Now it still really highlights rhythmically what's happening, but by having this modulation present that supports the ramping of the rhythm, it makes the sound overall more expressive and more interesting because I'm doubling down on the core idea that makes this pattern fun. Thank you so much for watching. Time Warp is absolutely my favorite transformer in Live 12. And hopefully it's inspired you to make some new and interesting music this week using it. As always, please consider leaving a comment, liking, and subscribing. I'm working really hard on every weekly video to try and grow this channel to 10,000 subscribers by the end of 2025. And I'm so glad to have you here. Till next time.